Hey guys and welcome back. So in this section we'll talk about classes. Now if you come from a Java or C sharp background you all you might already know what classes are and classes in TypeScript are uh, are some things uh, similar to those that we have in Java and C sharp. But if you don't know what classes are or if you don't come from a Java or C sharp background classes are basically blueprints uh, that can be used for creating objects. They encapsulate uh, logic and data in the form of methods and properties. Then they have uh, access uh, specifiers like public, private and protected, which specify that a particular property or method is going to be accessible to the outside world or not. Then they can contain uh, things like properties, methods, setters, getters and a constructor function. OK, and then you can uh, also implement or you can uh, also inter inherit from uh, other classes by using the super keyword classes can implement interfaces and uh, classes can be used to enforce types okay so let's see how this translates into code so i have visual studio open and i have already created a file named classes.ts and i'm i've added a script tag inside my index.html that uh, that source is uh, classes.js and the TypeScript compiler is already running, which would transpile my classes.ts file into classes.js file. Okay, so let's create a class quickly. To create a class, uh, we can use the class keyword and then uh, specify the name of our class, uh, which would be person. Okay, now it can have uh, properties like first name, which would be of type string last name which would be of type string and age which would be of type say number it can also have a constructor method that would receive a first name as string last name as string and age as a number and um, whoever is instantiating this per this particular class will be passing uh, these three values to it okay and now let's see uh, let's say that it also has a method named get full name which returns a string and this returns this dot first name and this dot last name okay so if i wanted to create an instance of a class person this would be of type person in this case so we are specifying the type of a particular variable as person so only only a, only an object of the person class can be assigned to the my person variable now okay and the object can be created by using the new keyword following the name of the class and parenthesis OK, now what this will do is it will call the constructor method that we have defined on the class. OK, now since the constructor method requires the first name, last name and age, we'll have to pass those while creating or while newing up the instance of a person. So let's say I passed in uh, John as the first name, Doe as the last name and age as 25. So now my person uh, is uh, my person is now an instance of a person class. Okay, and uh, since this is an instance, it will have access to the properties like age, first name, get full name, and last name. Okay, and since these four are public methods or public properties and methods, uh, the outside world that is the person, my person class, classes instance has access to all of these. Okay. Uh, let's say we call the get full name method here. Okay, and then we print out whatever this returns to the console. Okay, and save this. Let's see what this is going to return. It's going to return undefined. So looks like I did something wrong in here. Let's see. OK, yeah, so uh, I'll have to assign the first name, last name and age with whatever is received in here. 
so i can do it in this way first name last name as this and age as age okay now that this keyword is used to have access to that part that those uh, properties or methods inside this function or inside this class okay and the first name last name and age here are these uh, values that are received as arguments okay so now if i save this i'll have um, john do printed onto the console okay all right now ideally uh, properties should be defined as private so the outside world should not have access to them and properties should only have or uh, should only be accessible by using uh, some methods okay like we have here so methods uh, should be uh, i mean this is a recommendation that methods should be uh, public and the property should be private okay so since we need private properties uh, we can specify the property names with a private access uh, member specifier and now this still would work in the same way because we are not having access to the public property the to the properties now but then again if i type in something like my person initially we were having access to first name last name and age but now we just have access to the get full name because it is public in nature so we haven't specified any member access uh, modifier here so by default it would be considered as public and that was the same case with these properties as well unless until we specified it with a private member access specifier okay all right <clears throat> now uh there is a cleaner way of doing this so um let's say if i wanted to get rid of this code here and this code here as well and still wanted this to work what i could do is i could specify these member access specifiers as private okay and now these would be considered as a part of this person class itself okay but now i already have first name uh, in here last name and age in here it's going to give me an error saying that duplicate identifier first name so i don't really need the uh, need these declarations now and i also don't really need these assignments here because whatever is assigned to assigned to these properties would be the actual value of these properties okay so if i save this now it should work again in the same way as it was working okay all right now let's uh, have a look at one more class say employee and uh, we need to uh, and this employee needs to uh, have properties like first name last name age and an id as well okay so we already have first name last name and age properties in the person class okay so uh we can still uh, do something like repeat the whole process again and create these properties as well but since uh, these properties are already available as a part of the person class we can simply inherit from the person class and to inherit uh, from a particular class we use the extends keyword in typescript okay and then the name of the class we want to inherit from okay so now employee class is inheriting from the person class so it will have access to uh, it will i mean all the instances of the employee class will also have properties like first name last name age and uh, a method named get full name okay so let's say we have a constructor in here and this constructor has um, an id which is of type number a first name which is of type string a last name which is of type string and an age which is of type number okay now since we are extending the person class we need to call a super method inside the constructor otherwise it's going to give us an error it will say that the constructors derived from classes must contain a super call so 
we need to have a super call inside this but then the super call would eventually call up the constructor method that we have on the parent class that is person and the constructor method here expects three arguments named first name last name and age with these uh, particular types string string and number and we already have first name last name and age here so we can simply pass these values to the super call okay and now we just have the id uh, id field now uh, similar to this where we specified the private access specifier uh, in the constructor method we can do something similar so that we don't have to do something like uh, this dot id equals id and then specify a private id id property with number type okay so instead of doing this i'll just remove this from here remove this as well and then specify this as private now we are not uh, specifying these three um, arguments as private because if we do that uh, then it will it will define or it will declare three uh, three members or three properties on my employee class and not the person class okay uh, the employee class already uh, already is extending from the person class so it already should have things like first name last name and age we just need to pass it to uh, the super uh, to uh, to the constructor method of uh, the person class by calling the super method okay all right now um, let's say we create an instance of the employee class by calling the employee constructor we new it up and pass it things like jane do and age let's say 30 okay now one more thing to note down here is that the manager is of type person but i'm assigning it a value of type employee okay so uh, this is a correct syntax this is a valid syntax in in the case because employee is extending from person okay so any particular variable that is defined of type parent class can store the values of type child class okay so that's why this particular syntax is uh, totally valid in this case if i somehow uh, don't want to extend uh, the person class then it's going to give me an error okay and then i'll have to do something like employee in that case and then that, that would be a valid syntax okay but i don't really want that so i'll just uh, redo all my or uh, undo all my changes okay all right now uh let's say we have an age uh, a get age method in here that returns a number and then it returns this dot age okay and let's say uh, this is protected in nature okay so if i wanted to have access to get age i won't be having access to it because it is protected in nature and only the child class uh, will have access to the protected members of its parent class so i'll still have access to uh, the get is method inside my child class that is the employee class okay so if suppose i call a uh, get uh, if i define a method named get age here i'll still have access to the get age method now the get age method is in the parent class so to have access to it i'll have to call it using the super keyword okay and i'll have access to it but then since i'm calling a protected member inside a particular function this particular function will again turn up to be protected so i won't be having access to that as well okay so there, then uh, i'm i cannot really think of a particular use case wherein we would be using protected members but 
there might be a use case in which you might have to use it so just for the sake of that um, we are discussing about this okay now what you can also do is you can um, you can overwrite the method that you have inside a parent class inside your child class okay so let's say i wanted to overwrite the get full name method uh, and instead of returning just the first name and last name i needed to return a string saying that the the full name of this uh, person is first name space last name okay so that is something i can do here um so if i do some i'll have to use the same signature though uh, and by signature i mean the name and the return type of of the method okay and now in here i can do something like return uh the full name of this person is all right now i don't really have access to first name and last name here okay so i cannot do something like this dot first name or last name it just have id get full or uh, that get full name and age okay but i have access to the get full name method here and i can call that inside my uh child classes method by using the super keyword and by calling the get full name here okay <coughs> and now i can call the get full name method on this and let's see what this logs to the console so ideally it should log the full name of the person is jane doe uh, let's save this and see that in action and yeah it did uh, log the same thing okay so that's how you can override methods inside your child class from your parent class okay now let's quickly have a look at what interfaces uh, can be used for so interfaces are uh, some sorts of contracts that can be used to uh, enforce a particular class that is implementing those uh, interfaces to do some things inside them okay so let's say for example i had an interface say i person now this is a naming convention here okay all the interfaces names uh, it's recommended and it's a naming convention that they should start with the alphabet i so that it is uh, it it is easy for the developers to identify them as interfaces okay so let's say we have an interface i person and it has a method named get full name it's a method which returns a string okay and if say if i wanted to implement that interface inside uh, on the person class to implement a and to implement an interface you need to specify the implements keyword and then the name of the class i person okay now if i don't define a method named get full name that returns a string over here i'm going to get an error and it will say that uh, the class person incorrectly implements interface i person property get full name is missing inside the type person okay so um, this is some sort of a contract saying that whoever implements the i person interface must define a method named get full name that should return a string okay so unless we do that we are going to get an error okay and we cannot also do something like uh, this returns a number and we cannot do that uh, it's going to still give us an error in that case okay so that's uh, how you can use uh, interfaces uh, we'll have a look at uh, some more interfaces in detail in the next video so i'll see you on the other side thanks a lot